Hey Cibo Cloud users, I am Laszlo from Gimnet.io and in this video we are going to e deploy a dummy application on our production environment. So until now we've been setting up the production environment, we have created the GitOps environment, adding a bunch of components, we even have an ingress controller now and it's probably time to deploy something meaningful on this cluster, an application that we want to host, that we want to serve from this cluster. Now, you may have an app already, but maybe you are a cluster administrator and you don't have any Docker image or, or custom application at hand and you need to deploy something just to test. This video is going to help you about that. So I am facing this problem very often. Uh, I, I need to create a test setup uh, with a few environment variables and ingress and the volume and, you know, a secret or a config map every day of the week. So we've at, at Gimlet we have made a, a Helm chart for that. So it is called One Chart, and it is a, a very general purpose Helm chart. You can use it to deploy any web application. Even the image name is configurable, as you can see it here. Uh, we are also putting a big emphasis that uh, it should work without any settings, so it should um, deploy something, something useful, so that as you can test with. So first of all, or as, as a first step, we are going to deploy an application without any config. Then we are going to set a few environment variables, and we are also going to set an ingress which, with HTTPS. And as a final step, we are going to place this uh, application uh, configuration under our GitOps repository. So let's get started, shall we? All right, so if you go to Gimnet.io and you look for one chart, uh, you will quickly see uh, the typical two liner of, you know, uh, of Helm. So first of all, you have to add a Helm repo uh, to your local Helm registry. And then later on, you have to uh, install or upgrade a given application name with a given configuration. I sometimes use this uh, template helm template command as well. It doesn't deploy to any cluster. It doesn't even connect to the cluster. Instead, it renders YAML out of the helm chart. It's quite useful. Uh, we might use it uh, in this video as well. But uh, let's not run ahead. Let's add this helm repo. Uh, for obvious reasons, I already have this, but you will uh, have a different message coming out of this one. And I told you that uh, one chart works without any parameters. So how about we make a test? We are going to call uh, this application test app and we are calling Helm template test app one chart one chart. That's the chart name and see what YAML is actually going to be generated. It generated, first of all, a service uh, and the deployment resource. And in the deployment resource, I promised you that there will be an image inside here, and it's the Nginx image. It's a web application, it has some output, and you can test it on an ingress as well. So on the production environment, I have a single node and no resources in the default namespace. So let's run the helm install command uh, without any parameter and let's name this test app uh, without any defaults it created a deployment and it is in running state if i would port forward this to to my uh, laptop it would show an nginx welcome page but let's go one step forward uh, basically with helm you have the values yaml file where you can put parameters for the helm chart uh, I'm going to use this uh, dummy values YAML here. I'm going to create a values YAML and I'm going to edit it. And the image, I still don't need anything else, just nginx. I'm also putting some environment variables inside and I am using an ingress control, an ingress as well. This is going to be test app at pro production gimlet io if you remember in our previous video we have set up an ingress controller and a wildcard domain name for 
production gimlet.io. So test app production gimlet.io will automatically have a DNS entry so I can test it on the web. So how about I re-render first uh, the YAML with these settings. And as you can see at the at the end, it also rendered an ingress on test app production gimlet.io and on the top it also included a config map with the two variables I, I defined. So how about uh, instead of printing the YAML, I am upgrading the deployed application. As you would expect, it restarts uh, the pod and it's already running and I should have an ingress by now. Yes, I have it. And uh, to test that it actually serves traffic, I can go on test app production gimlet.io and I see the Nginx page. So, so far, it, this is very good. However, this uh, unsecure uh, icon is a bit annoying. So, because we have cert manager already on the cluster, how about we go one step forward with, uh, with the one chart configuration and enable TLS. Now, on the Gimlet IO homepage, there, are, there is a reference part for one chart and the various options are documented here. HTTPS tells me that I should use the TLS enabled true field and that is probably enough for the SSL snippets to be generated. So how about I enable TLS and I'm upgrading the installation again. I, I don't think this is restarts the pod because it only patched the ingress and if I describe the ingress I should see that it also has a TLS uh, settings enabled and because cert manager is so fast and let's encrypt behind cert manager I believe if I refresh this page again I know I still don't do not have the uh, SSL certificate um, let me look around I think I need something else as well so TLS was enabled and yes with HTTPS and let's encrypt I also need to add an annotation to my ingress telling cert manager that please provision an SSL cert here and I'm upgrading again and uh, this time around did I make a mistake oh somehow I deleted this one but I'm upgrading and by now if I look at the pods I should see the uh, cert manager ECMI um, pod which is a temporary uh, tool for Let's Encrypt to prove its identity or to, to Let's Encrypt. So this is a cert manager pod that proves identity for Let's Encrypt and once the this proof is established like right now I should have uh, a certificate stored in this secret file and if I refresh this page I have a valid secure site so in like five minutes we have deployed a dummy uh, application on the cluster with ingress and SSL certificates this is very good now at Gimlet we do everything uh, with GitOps and no video should end without any GitOps section so how about I store this configuration in my dash apps repo now until now the dash apps repo was quite empty I think we have not put anything inside besides flux so how about I close all windows uh, this is my values YAML this is some backup let me delete it I don't need it anymore so I have this values YAML and if I keep this in the in this repo and I commit it and push it uh, Flux will try to deploy and it will throw an error because Flux doesn't really understand this values YAML so what is this it's a YAML with a few fields so um, 
but there is a file format that Flux understands and Flux able to deploy uh, a Helm release out of it. So how about I create a folder for my test app. This is going to be the convention of this repository. Each application goes into a different folder and I put here the resources that Flux will deploy for this application. Now I could take two routes. First, I am uh, storing raw, regular, plain, simple Kubernetes manifests here, uh, basically the output of Helm template. I could do that. Um, let's try with that one. And second, uh, I am going to try to deploy the Helm chart itself. So, so I will ask Flux to control the Helm release process. But first, uh, let's do uh, this flavor of the process where I am, instead of installing directly, I am writing the YAMLs into a file within this folder and the test app has the manifest YAML which is you know the long form classic Kubernetes uh, manifest file and this is what I'm going to deploy uh, with Flux. How about I... Uh, um, what should I do with this one to not interfere with Flux? I will uh, take this and I will put it into the readme file because Flux excludes readme files from from deployment. So with this uh, amendment, I am doing a git status. I am adding everything to the uh, GitOps repo. And I am saying that I'm deploying uh, row manifests for test app. I have not pushed it yet. Uh, just one last step. I am going to clean this application from the cluster uh, because uh, that way I, I will be able to prove the working of, of Flux and, and this GitOps approach much more easily. Uh, so if I double check this and double check this and double check that, I can s say that yes, it is gone from the cluster. So how about I push this into the remote location of Git and uh, give some time so that Flux is able to notice the change in, in on GitHub, pull it down to the cluster and applying it to the cluster. Uh, it will take like 30 seconds. And in the meantime, I'm just going to watch the pods on this cluster. Good, so my application is running and my ingress as well is there. So how about I refresh the page? Oh, sorry, refresh the page and the application is still there. So good, we can double check the logs of Flux as well, uh, just to be sure or just because we are curious. Um, in the Flux system, it's called Customize Controller. Um, and it really says that our reconciliation has finished in 400 milliseconds and it has happened like a minute ago so this is pretty cool I'm going back to the default namespace and I promised you that I'm going to show you how to not uh, how to put a Helm release inside our GitOps repository so um, maybe I am making an, a different app. So I'm going to call this test app two, just so I have the, the two solutions side by side. So for this one to work, we need to use custom resources, custom Flux resources that uh, is um, going to tell Flux to install a Helm chart. Now, from where can you get uh, some code on some inspiration from the infrastructure repo that you already have. Because in the infrastructure repo, we already have what we need. So first of all, we have to define a Helm repository. It's basically uh, the same as 
running the helm repo add command locally. So I'm going to borrow this YAML piece and copy over to the apps repo. And then I'm going to need uh, a helm release custom resource, which is which links the helm repository together with a helm chart in that repository. And as you remember, we have the values YAML. It also has a place for that. So I start with the helm repository. I'm going to call this, um, maybe I'm just putting everything into a single file because um, that way it's easier. Um, test app to dot yaml. And I start with the helm repository first. It is going to be called uh, one chart. It's going to be placed the default namespace and the URL is something I need to take from from the one chart page. So in the one chart concepts, I have the URL, which is chart one chart dot dev. So I have the ham repository added uh, and I'm stealing or borrowing and the ham release resource. Um, it's going to be called test app dash two in the default namespace. Release name is going to be test app dash two. Chart is one chart from the one chart uh, repository. And the values we have saved them in the readme file. So I just copy everything over here watching out for the identation and uh, basically this yaml piece simulates a ham repo add and the ham repo install slash ham repo upgrade so uh, one final thing this is called test app 2 so i am making a commit and again um, now it's going to go to GitHub. Flux will pull the changes and it will apply on the cluster. So again, nothing else to do, just watching the pods. If you are impatient like I am, you can always inspect what Flux is doing. So how about I uh, look at the Flux namespace right now. We have all the controllers here. I'm going to look at the customized controller. It says that reconciliation has finished about a minute ago. And oh, maybe I made a mistake here. No, namespace is default. Yeah, so we can always get the hum releases in the default namespace. And uh, it says that Helm chart default default test F2 is not ready. So how I get, uh, how about I get uh, Helm repositories uh, and describe Helm release test F2. Mm. Let me just double check. Release name is this one. Ham repository is this. Oh yes, the version. Of course, you have to set a version for uh, for the Helm chart, and you have to spell the the name right. So it has to be one chart, and I think uh, the version will be zero thirty six or something. But you can always double check that on uh, GitHub.com slash Gimlatio slash one chart, which has v zero thirty six. And maybe I can also do ham chart show one chart one chart or it's the other way, other way around ham show chart one chart one chart yes so the version is zero thirty six zero without the v um, it's here and I am making the commit again. And this time around, I think Flux will have a better chance succeeding. If 
here we go so the moment flux realized there was a change the ham re uh, release was updated now it was in reconciliation in progress state now it is in succeeded state so if i get the pods i have test app 2 running and i also have the cert manager pod running just to prove our uh, identity again because this is a different domain so it's a new cert manager process kicking in and in a few seconds i will have that resolved it is resolved right now and i should visit test app 2 slash production or dot production and here we go so uh it's actually turned out to be a longer video than expected but we did uh, quite a few things so first of all uh, we started using the dash apps repo we put two new folders inside test app and test app 2 um, this is a convention that uh, you can keep using in this repository and in the in the future as well when, when we're going to use the automation deployment automation features of gimlet gimlet will also follow this um, convention so this is uh, going to be it for this repo and inside here with test app we are we were using simple kubernetes manifests it's a very verbose file and then in test up two we used uh helm so flux is, d is using helm to release our application uh, and as you remember we also used the one chart helm chart which is a generic purpose helm chart for web applications and you can use it for testing or, or for your production application we have provided some variables and the boilerplate for it and once this was correct besides the misspelling and the version error uh, flux was able to deploy my application so that's that thank you for watching and i uh, hope you stick around bye bye